So previously we've looked at lung function uh, very briefly at respiratory failure types 1 and 2 and we also went through in terms of etiology uh, the main categories of lung diseases. Now we are going to look at uh, more specifically chronic lung disease and here I'm referring to the non-infectious types of disease. So we're going to be looking at it in terms of the functional abnormality, the main functional aberrations which is obstructive versus restrictive. So in obstructive conditions usually there is uh, the element of airflow resistance and um, often these are diseases of the airway uh, meaning that there is airflow resistance uh, from the trachea as proximal as this all the way down to the distal airways such as the respiratory bronchioles. So airway diseases usually. So in contrast to this, in restrictive lung diseases, there is a restriction or decreased lung expansion. Uh, in other words, there is decreased lung capacity. So clinically, how do we uh, divide them or how do we tell them apart? This is by doing... The first one that we're going to talk about is emphysema. Emphysema is defined as a permanent dilatation of the smaller airways that are distal to the terminal bronchioles. There is also accompanying tissue destruction, uh, but uh, interestingly there is no scarring or fibrosis. And emphysema is usually a result of the imbalance between the proteases and the inhibitors or protease inhibitors. So there is a relative increase in proteases uh, because there is a decrease in inhibitors or there is simply increased production of proteases. So what actually produces the proteases? These are our very own cells, which are our neutrophils, one of the key inflammatory cells in acute inflammation. And tobacco from cigarette smoke somehow triggers an inflammatory response, giving rise to increased production of proteases from neutrophils. Another condition that gives rise to emphysema is alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency. This is one of the congenital diseases that we briefly touched on. And uh, in this condition, uh, alpha-1 antitrypsin is actually a protease inhibitor. So again, you can see there's a relative increase in proteases. So what happens in emphysema is that there is decreased elastic recoil of the airways, which leads to a functional obstruction. And in addition to this, there is actually also a decrease in net gas exchange capacity because of the reduced surface area due to the destruction of the alveolar walls. Now, the next entity that we're going to look at is chronic bronchitis. And in contrast to emphysema, this involves the larger airways. And this has a clinical definition. So chronic bronchitis is defined as a productive cough occurring on most days for three months for at least two consecutive years or two successive years. So this is a clinical definition. And uh, what happens in chronic bronchitis is that there is narrowing of the lumina of the airways. And there's also excess mucus production giving rise to mucus plugging. So together these uh, result in an obstructive picture. And this can be caused by inhaled irritants such as cigarette smoke, again the um, tobacco in cigarette smoke, as well as certain uh, minerals such as silica. Uh, now the next entity we're going to talk about, which is also one of the chronic obstructive pulmonary diseases, is bronchiolitis. And this affects the smaller airways. and uh, is defined as inflammation within the airways that are less than 2 millimeters in diameter. And again, it can be uh, caused by these inhaled irritants or air pollutants, and there is usually accompanying scarring as well as narrowing of the airways, giving rise to obstruction. So these are the main obstructive uh, chronic obstructive pulmonary diseases. There is also another obstructive condition which is not considered here because uh, the obstruction is usually reversible and that is of course asthma. And asthma has an inflammatory component to it also together with mucus uh, secretion.